Here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file using the accountant view as opposed to the business view. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top and switching the view down below, duplicating some tabs to put reports in like we do every time. Right click the tab up top to duplicate it. We're going to right click again to duplicate again. Back to the tab to the middle. Go down to the reports on the left hand side. Let's open up the balance sheet report as it's thinking. Tab to the right reports on the left and this time we want the PL, the profit and loss report i'm going to close up the hamburger we're going to look at this this time i'm going to look at it for october so 10 01 and 25 that's where i have the data for the current example then we're going to go to 10 30 25 and let's run it so nothing's in it though thus far that's what we want to see tab to the middle Closing up the hamburger, same thing. We're gonna go from 10.01.25 to 10.30.25 and run that one. Okay, let's tab to the left. We've been thinking about e-commerce situations, selling inventory, but not on ground in a store, but online with the help of third-party applications, for example, Shopify or Amazon. And we've kind of been focusing in on a Shopify situation here. We might look at Amazon in more depth in a future presentation. So in a prior presentation, we looked at the concept of using a journal entry to pull the information uh, from Shopify into our system. And this mirrors what many applications, so even if you're using an app method, you, you might have a similar kind of process. So it's useful to understand this method so you can kind of see what's happening with the app because a lot of apps are still gonna be confusing because they're pulling in uh, a lot of information and trying to summarize it possibly in some way, shape or form. So the general idea is that we had our income from the Shopify side of stuff and we can look at our reports and we can compare those to the payouts. So what we did is we looked at the payout we looked at the items that were included in this payout. The payout is gonna actually hit our bank account. And then we thought about the reports that give us uh, more detail, such as the sales reports, breaking that information out. So instead of waiting for the payout to just hit the bank feed, because we do expect the payouts to hit the bank feeds, if we just add it as revenue when that happens, then we're gonna lose some of the detail. So what we wanna do manually, what we did last time in Excel uh, manually or in a prior presentation is to mirror this data from Shopify into the system here, make a journal entry, which posts all of this information into a clearing account. And then when we see it hit the clearing account, uh, hit our bank account using the bank feeds, we'll decrease the clearing account. So let's, let's actually put this into our system. And again, this will kind of mirror what some of the applications will do. So just a quick recap, we imagined that the sales uh, side, according to Shopify for a particular deposit included multiple sales that were kind of grouped together with gross sales of this amount, minus the discounts, no returns for this example. And then we had shipping that we charged for the shipping expenses and sales taxes that we collected for a total of this amount but then that would be the total amount of of like the sales that we had and what we collected on it however the payout methods that we had in were managing our shopify store were not just shopify payments but we allowed people to pay us with paypal so if they pay us with paypal then we're, we're going to say this amount was paid out through paypal which is a third party processor which is going to charge its own fees and then we had the rest paid out by Shopify. And then the Shopify payments, because they're through Shopify, not another third party, we know what the fees are because we can see them in the reports in Shopify. And that gives us our payout that we expect to hit on the bank account. So then we made a journal entry of all this data so that we still tie out to this payout, but we have all the detail from these reports. That's what we want to do. So we're gonna say, the Shopify sales uh, here is coming from, if I use my little things here, it's coming from there. And then we had our discount that is coming from there. And then no returns, the Shopify uh, shipping income, and then the sales tax, 
and then the uh, payments let's clear this out here and then the fees and then the the shopify payment clearing account and then there's nothing here so that's going to be our journal entry that we posted last time let's make that green to our our worksheet so we can see how it looks like in a in a in an excel kind of format let's go ahead and put this into excel now and again as we do this remember that this is something that is similar to what some of the recommended softwares will typically do and trying to group this information. So whether we do it manually or software, we got to kind of understand these clearing accounts to some degree. So what we're going to do is we're going to enter a journal entry. So I'm going to go up to my new button up top and I'm going to say that we're going to make a journal entry. Now, a lot of people, if they're not accountants, don't like journal entries, but, but when you have a very long, complex transaction, there's not really any other way around it. We could probably use another form, but it would just, it'd be just as complex as just doing a journal entry so let's we're gonna have to do the journal entry so we're gonna say this happens on uh 10 let's say 10 15 2 5 and the journal entry you can come up with a template if you use this should be pretty much the same all the time and then you could just plug in so you can memorize the journal entry so you can see what the debits and credits are and then plug the stuff into the journal entry so we're going to say we have the shopify sales so shopify sales we're gonna have here let's just make sure i've got now if you don't have these accounts set up you can you can make these accounts as you go with adding a new button up top uh so so you can do that but i'm kind of copying this from the, the the accounts that are going to be set up when we use the app so you the the if you set up a new account it would be an income type of account so the bottom line is it would be an income type of account uh, that you'd be putting the money into so then we're going to say according to our thing here that that was one six two four eight nine so i'm going to say all right and that's going to be a credit because revenue goes up with a credit and now it disappeared shopify sales is going to be a credit of one six two four point eight nine and I should maybe put a description on the date of the of the deposit or to group it to know what it is, but I'm not going to do it here for the example. I'm going to say, all right. And then we had Shopify discounts. See if I have Shopify, Shopify discount. So here's our, our discount. Now the discount, if you were to set this one up, would generally be also a revenue or income type of account. So if you went new item, revenue or income type of account and this one is actually going to be a contra income account meaning it's going to bring income down so you might think it should be an expense but it's it's, it's generally netting out from the from the revenue side of things so it gets down to net sales that we'll get we'll get to instead of having it as an expense even though the expense would get to the same bottom line so that's going to be 16.99 according to our worksheet and then we didn't have any returns so i'll just skip that one but if you had returns you could say shopify returns so i don't have shopify let's just make this one up shopify returns and i'm going to say uh tab and if i had uh returns you might have a, another account for that would also be usually an income account because it's going to be a uh, sales returns and allowances so it's going to act like an expense but in the income area usually i'm going to make it an uh, other primary income shopify returns all right but we didn't have any so i'm just going to put a zero there 